fast. So, all right, where was I? Um, so by learning to read the responses of the horse and working in that environment where there's uh, the performance environment where I was able to get feedback from the riders and the trainers and learn from other, other therapists and, uh, and trainers and professionals, I was able to put this method together that um, to improve performance in the horse and by you following the horse's responses get these releases and the kind of the fun byproduct of that is this interaction you get going with the horse. So it's very user friendly. Um, it's fun and once you get this interaction going, it's not just a mechanical, this is a, this is a certain muscle and then you rub it this way and this is a muscle you rub that way and sometimes these muscles get sore doing this. This is an interaction with the horse where you actually, um, the horse is participating in the process. So that's, uh, it's not only the fun part of it, but it's I think the part that makes it so effective. The direction of treatment. Most horses, they generally uh, load the right front left hind so they would get tight on the right front and the left hind. I'll find, them, I'll find them very tight in the left, in the gluteal back here in the sacrum. Hey, that's my book, buddy. And then I'll find them very tight up here on the right, on the, on the right side of the pole. So what I do is I start on the left side, the easier side. We'll do the left front. First we'll do the bladder meridian on the left side. Then we'll work on the left front, uh, the head, neck, and shoulders. Hey, that's my book, I told you. Then we'll come to the right front, the harder side. Then we'll go to the right hind, which is the easier side behind. And then we'll go to the left hind, which is generally the, heart, the tighter side behind. So just as a rule, that's how, we, that's how I start. Uh, any questions? Um, I like to just find out something that if I work on, I, I, I don't want to hurt anything. That If the horse has an injury or he's been injected or something, that I don't want to do any damage. I generally like to just start out and go over the horse myself. And, and, uh, but it's good to know, I mean, it's good to know as much as you can about the horse, but I don't uh, watch a horse go a lot. I mean, I watch them go when they're going, but when I go over the horse, it's, I'm going by what I feel in the horse. And then if, he, if the owner or the trainer has other information, then I can put that together with it. Um, but I do really like to know as much as I can, you know, like what he does for a living, if he's been off because of an injury, because you don't want to hurt anything that's already been hurt. And it's good to know if he's just worked or not because you might, like I do an evaluation too where I palpate, palpate for pain when I'm not going, you know, when I've got a lot of horses to do, I'll go in and poke and jab, you know, and see where he hurts. So it's good to, good to know, or, and I'll flex his, his joints and things, but it's good to know if he's just come, on, come in out of, off of work because if he's really reactive, then you don't panic. Ah, this horse is really sore. It's because he just, he just jumped or whatever. So that's a good thing to know. But also any things, any things injuries that he's had because you don't want to aggravate anything that's hard. Good boy. Okay, so now, and I always work on the horse in the stall. We're demonstrating out here, but we'll go into the stalls when, once we start practicing. Um, but I work on the horse in the stall because they're, they're uh, you can take the lead rope off sometimes. They're, you, you don't have to chase them all over the place. You know, if they want to walk away from me, I'll let them walk away from me, and then when they stop walking, I can go work on them again. <laughs> but the stall is just a comfortable place to work on the horse. Are they offline? Pardon? Take them off the well, it's ha whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. If you're if, like a horse like this that is actually going to be moving around a lot, you can keep them on the line. You can have somebody hold them if you like, because you don't want them to keep walking around. Um, Oh, he's holding himself, so we don't have to hire somebody. <laughs> now, okay, where was I? We're going to, the bladder meridian. The bladder meridian starts, I mean, depending on what book you're looking at, I, we just go in the general area, starts over the eye, comes over the pole. He's tense up here, as you can see. He's just telling us right off the bat. Um, and it comes, the main, I usually start here right behind the pole, and more or less three inches, you know, off the center line, all the way down along the spine, and then back here, there's another branch that comes down here, but we don't, this is for our purposes, we just need to have follow the general, I'll let somebody, somebody hold him. And it goes along here. And then back here, it kind of splits off and comes down the poverty groove, and goes down here. And it goes along, maybe this far off the, the, the middle of the hind leg, down through that groove, goes over the fetlock, and it ends, terminates right here. At a, it's called a ting point. In Chinese medicine, there are six on the hoof. They're the terminate, terminations of, of different meridians. This one terminates here, right down this kind of ridge and where the coronary band is, that's where that would terminate. Um, there's another one corresponding on the inside. There's a ting point basically in the front here. And there's one opposite in the back, just above the bulb of the heel. And then there are two here in the middle between this one and this one. 
the ping point is an acupuncture point, and it's a termination of a meridian. So this ping point would be the bladder meridian ping point. I don't know the other ones. The, I use the bladder meridian mainly because it relaxes the horse. It, uh, it's a major meridian. All the other meridians connect with the bladder meridian. Um, and it runs basically along the areas we're going to be working, which is along, it doesn't come down here, which is where we're going to be, but it runs along the spinal column and past the junction of the shoulders, the forelimbs to the trunk, past the junction of the, the sacro, sacral lumbar junction and the sacroiliac, the junction of the hind limbs. And uh, it's a very relaxing meridian to go over for the horse. And the reason I do the bladder meridian is one, to get, you'll see where the horse has tension by going lightly. The main reason is you get this communication going with the horse. You get that level of communication because all horses are different. When, when uh, I come up to the horse if, and he doesn't know what I'm going to do and I start going very lightly over the bladder meridian and, he's, and he realizes, oh, this isn't going to hurt, then he relaxes. And when he realizes it's, he's starting to release tension, he relaxes even more. And you can see the level of response. Different horses will respond differently. Some will be tense up right away and it's more difficult to read. Others immediately are, are very interactive with humans and they'll start entrusting and they'll start to release right away and relax. Some horses are too interactive with humans, which is when you have somebody hold them so that they'll at least hold still long enough for you to get going.